the Philadelphia 76ers are really making their way in the NBA's Eastern Conference, being the top seed, getting a decisive win over the Nets a few weeks ago. And here to talk to the fans out there about the Sixers is longtime Sixers fan and frequent guest on this podcast, Linwood Outlaw. Linwood, how you doing, man? Hey, what's up, Earl, man? Nothing much. I always say every day above ground is a good one, and I know I feel like a broken record when I say it, but it's always going to be true. It's very true, man. Very true indeed. I've always wanted to ask you, you being a Baltimore native, how mm-hmm. did you become a fan of the Sixers? Charles Barkley, man. That was my favorite player as a kid. It was my favorite player for many years, um, you know, up until I would say like in the early 90s on. That's what drew me in initially. I always loved those throwback Sixers unis. The unis that we wore at like that season, like the 90, 91, 91, 92 year. Um, I was a fan of those uniforms, and it was Charles Barkley, man. That's what drew me into being a Sixers fan. No offense to you as a Wizards fan and everybody who grew up as a Wizards fan, but I never really cared much for the Wizards or the Bullets or anything. Like, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe it would have been different had that team remained in Baltimore, but it was with Charles Barkley, man. He's what drew me in. I was my favorite player and still one of my all-time favorite players, to be honest. And um, that's how I pretty much got locked into the Sixers. I had a quick question about that. We were talking about Sixers uniforms, and we're talking about the Captain America uniforms that they had, the you know, Sean <laughs> yeah. Bradley ones, that weird gap in between the ones that Barkley wore, but between the weird gap where the Dana Barrows rookie year Iverson ones and then the, the black Sixers uniforms. I always think about that. I think they're some of my favorite Sixers uniforms, but I know everybody else talks about how ugly they are. But yeah. I personally thought that those Captain America uniforms are the best Sixers uniforms prior to them going back to the red, white, and blue in the Elton Brand years. Mm-hmm. I wasn't the biggest fan of the Captain American uniforms, but when I see the current season's uh, City Edition uniforms, I actually like those Captain America uniforms better. I think this year's city edition is it's a black jersey and it's uh, it sort of has a design of like row houses within the Philadelphia area. It's an okay design, but I'm I'm not really a big fan of it. I think that the two previous city editions that we had, the two previous seasons, were better personally, and it made me a bigger fan of the Captain America design. When it comes to the Sixers uniforms, uh, and especially in the NBA in general, they are more likely to have a variable design of uniforms, especially you don't see it that much in the NFL. You don't see it that much in baseball unless you're the San Diego Padres, and you don't see it that much in hockey because you know they have the, like three uniforms, your alternate, maybe a throwback, a winter classic one, but other than that, I feel like the NBA is the only one that sort of got the note that mainly the kids, they love the different variety of jerseys. Yeah, I do personally as a basketball fan, as a Sixers fan. I'm always a bigger fan of the retro designs. That's been my thing. I'm going to always be like a retro design fan, but I like some of the newer designs as well. What I really liked about what we've done with uniforms in recent seasons is that we found a way to incorporate older designs with newer designs. You know, and I think it was a way to, you know, honor past uh, logos while also mixing in a new feel for the for the uniforms and the jerseys in general. So I really like that. I really liked our jerseys for the most part for the last couple of seasons. What expectations did you have? Doc Rivers, new head coach after several years under the Brett Brown experiment. I felt that it was the right time to make the move. They gave Brett Brown the opportunity to make it through the rebuild and then finally show what he could do with those players. And they just weren't able to get that far. And I think, especially in the Brett Brown tenure, that 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 buzzer beater against Toronto is, is one of those things that loomed that probably did him in after a particular moment. But going on to Doc Rivers, what is it about Doc Rivers that has instilled confidence in the Sixers? Man, Earl, I really hate reflecting on that buzzer beater, man. It just really puts me in a foul mood every time I bring somebody brings it up <laughs> or I have to reflect on it. That was probably the worst moment as an NBA fan for me personally to watch that shot go in. I really felt like we were going to win that game series and move on who knows what would have happened in the eastern conference finals or beyond but i felt like that was our series of fate. whether or not that was what did brett brown in it's hard to say i mean i hate when it, when situations when people point to a situation like that you know something that's so astronomical and say oh yeah that was probably it for brett brown after that i think brett was a good coach for us overall i think that 
it just got to a point where he took us as far as he could take us. I agree with you. I think it was the right time to move on. I wouldn't have minded if we had moved on the, the season before. But I always like Brett as a coach. I just think that we have reached a, a a point where it's like, okay, I think this is our ceiling with Brett. And I think it's time to go in and bring in a more inexperienced coach who could help guys like Embiid and Ben Simmons develop and evolve. Because I think that really was the stickler. He wasn't really helping those guys get better at a certain point. They were productive. I didn't necessarily see them getting better. And I think that that was the the key reason why we brought Doc Rivers in. He's a championship winning coach. Uh, he's a proven coach. And I think that he was the right guy for the job in terms of helping those guys get better because we're only going to go as far as Joel takes us and then as far as Ben takes us. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. And I think that the key is, is that those guys had to get better and have to get better in order for us to, to remain a power in the Eastern Conference, one of the top teams in the East. So I was excited that Doc had came on board. My expectations were, first off, I wanted us to use how last season ended as motivation. That was my first expectation. We ended last season with a sweep at the hands of the Boston Celtics. I hate losing to Boston in any game, postseason game, regular season game, preseason game. I hate losing to the Celtics. And I think that any true Sixers fan hates losing to Boston. And I hated that we got swept. It was a bad taste in my mouth, and I was hoping that we would use that as motivation for this upcoming season. Beyond that, I wanted us to remain a top four team in the East, and I felt like Doc would definitely help us do that. I was happy with the offseason moves we made. I was happy that we were able and surprised, really, to see that we were able to move Al Horford's contract. I just think he was a bad fit. You know, I'm not trying to badmouth Al Horford at all. I just think it was a bad fit for the team. It was a bad contract. I had a feeling when there were rumblings that we were going to sign out Horford that it would be a bad fit for us. And I was proven right. I didn't want to be right, but I was. And I was like, well, I think we're stuck with this contract because I don't think anyone's going to take it. But lo and behold, we made some moves. Darryl Morey stepped in. He was able to make some things happen for us on draft night. And that was the biggest move. I mean, I, at that point, I didn't even care who we had gotten in return for Al Horford as long as we got rid of the contract. But then we ended up getting a pretty good shoot in South Curry. We made some other deals and added Danny Green. Uh, we were able to reach a deal with Dwight Howard. And I think those moves have really helped to turn the team around. You know, I'm not going to say that they were home run moves, but they were good moves. They were good acquisitions. And I think that they contributed to the improvement we've shown in terms of regular season performance from last season to this season. So that was really my expectation, man. I just really wanted us to obviously make a deep playoff run. That's every year, you know. I, my hope is that we can make it to the Eastern Conference Finals at least. I think that that would be the next big step for us. But it was to, to remain a playoff team, use how last season ended as motivation. I think in a lot of ways we have. And I think in a lot of ways uh, Doc has mm-hmm. stepped in and really proven himself to be the difference for this basketball team. When it comes to the playoffs, we knew that the Sixers weren't going to lay a complete egg and get back to playoffs. Even the hot start got them out to the minds that everybody thought Philly is a team to beat or one of the teams to beat before the the Harden trade with the Nets. Looking at that, seeing that there were probably no worries that you guys were going to miss the playoffs. Looking at the playoffs itself, who do you think the Sixers match up the best with? I think we would match up pretty well pretty well against Milwaukee. I think that that would be a great series. It would be a great test for us. You know, I haven't really paid attention to the lower tier teams because of the whole play-in scenario, but I'm keeping my eye on it. I see teams like Boston and Washington hovering around those final two seeds in the East, but I'm only thinking about the top four teams, teams that, you know, let's assume, you know, that we handle business in the first round and move on. I'm, I'm thinking about teams like Milwaukee, Brooklyn, just from a talent standpoint, pure talent standpoint, because when I see Brooklyn, I just see a lot of, of talent, big collection of talent. That's how I look at them. I think that just from the standpoint that they have guys like KD, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, uh, that's a formidable matchup for anybody. For even the top teams, the teams you would consider the top teams, like the Miamis and the Milwaukee's and us. So that would be a tough matchup. But I'll also be interested to see how we would handle ourselves in that matchup as well. But I think that if I had to pick a team, I'd probably say maybe Milwaukee. I feel we're built to compete in, with and beat Milwaukee. Who is a team that, as Sixers fans, you guys are worried about? Um, I'm Brooklyn, first and foremost. 
again, just from talent. You know, I mean, there's no way you can look over their roster and see KD and James Harden and Kyrie Irving and say, well, we're not, we're not going to have our hands full. You know, this is a team that can score an enormous amount of points on a nightly basis. And I think that we're talking about guys who are all NBA players. Uh, yeah, they're figuring some things out, but I think that you'd be surprised what you can do when you have talent in this league. So I think that first and foremost, that's the team I'm concerned about. The team has always got my attention also is Washington, man. They've been on a roll lately. And, you know, this is a very real scenario that if we're able, you know, to clinch that number one seed and they are able to get that eighth seed, that could be a tough matchup for the first round. I think we could win it, but I think it would be a tough matchup. Those guys are, to me, they're the hottest team in the NBA right now. So, I mean, those are teams that give me concern right now at the moment. Going back to something that I wanted to ask you about, what is your most unique piece of Sixers-related memorabilia that you have? They're probably both Allen Iverson memorabilia. Well, something I hold dear was when I had a chance to meet Allen uh, briefly, you know, I still remember how huge that line was. It was a sports memorabilia show, I think it was, a sports card memorabilia show in Philadelphia. Um, but I was able to get a ticket. I was able to get in the line, uh, shake hands with him, take a picture with him. It was a cool experience. So that's something I'm going to get framed and hung up on the wall at some point. I still have it in a safe spot uh, so I get the right frame and everything for that. So that's something, the first thing that I have that I cherish more than anything is that picture with AI. My cousin, Tony, uh, went with me to that show. He's also in that photo. So um, I never thought I would get a chance to meet Alan Iverson ever in life, but I did that day. And it was, a, it was a cool experience. It was brief. It was quick, but it was cool. And I'm proud of that. I also have a picture, a nice photograph of Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant in a game that they were selling on NBA.com around that same time. I also picked that up for a pretty sweet price. And I want to get that framed as well. So really nice picture of those guys going at it. You know, Allen Iverson uh, during that era was my favorite player. And I used to always love to watch him go against the Lakers. Those were my favorite games to tune in on. And that picture, you know, I think symbolizes you know, sort of a rivalry that we had with that team back when AI and Kobe were the stars for those respective teams. I have some jerseys. Um, I have one for Allen Iverson that I scooped up in 2001 that I love. Um, I have Ben Simmons' jersey, Joel Embiid's jersey. I actually have three Joel Embiid jerseys. One was, is his all-star jersey. Another one is, is a Rose Sixers Uni, a home Sixers Uni. And I think a city statement edition jersey that's red. So I have four. So I have four Joel Embiid. And I have a bunch of caps. This is one of them. Um, one of my favorite caps that I have. One of my favorite logos during the Sixers era. I think that's really about it. I think that I mostly have just, just some jerseys, a few photos, but those are my favorites, particularly the two Allen Iverson pictures. When it comes to Joel Embiid and the numbers he's putting up in the MVP race, did this come to a surprise to you that he was going to be this good? I know, especially coming out of Kansas with the injuries and things like that. Did you think he was going to be this MVP caliber level player? I have to be honest with you. I didn't. I'm a little surprised by it, honestly. Like, I know that Joel had this in him. I did. Like, I knew that he had this level of play in him. I, I think that, uh, I think it was the season before last, I thought it was a really good season for Joel. But I didn't expect him to have a season in which he had such momentum for the MVP award. And he's in the daily conversation for the award. He's having a great year. And I think it, to me, he's my MVP. You know, he has my vote for sure. You know, if, if you know, if you're asking me who I think the MVP for the season is, I'll tell you it's Joel. If I sound like a homo or I sound, you know, like I'm showing favoritism, so be it. But to me, I mean, I've seen him play a lot this season, thanks to us being on national television a lot this year, which I loved. And I think that the man is just having a monster season. I mean, he has improved. And I think that he's improved in large part because of Doc Rivers' tutelage. And I think that that uh, Doc Rivers' arrival is what put him on the course toward an MVP season. That and, you know, losing to Boston, getting swept by Boston last year, I think all these things sort of came together. But I really love how he's trying to be consistent and how he's being aggressive night in and night out. You know, some nights in previous seasons, the way Joel was just dragging along. You know, he'd have some amazing nights and then some subpar nights by his standards. But I really feel as though he's been bringing it this year and uh, putting the team on his back on most nights. And uh, that's what MVPs do. And he has us in position uh, down the stretch to enter the playoffs as the top team in the East. And to me, I think that's worthy of an MVP award. 
Looking at the NBA Finals predictions, who do you have coming out of the East? Who do you have coming out of the West? Who wins and in how many games? <laughs> I mean, in my mind, in a perfect script, it would be us to come out of the East. I'm going to always roll with us no matter what, no matter, you know, who Brooklyn has on their team. So I'm going to roll with us. I'm going to say we're going to find a way to get it done. Out of the West, I see the Lakers coming out, man. I really do. Uh, they picked up some wins, I think, the last two games. I believe it was against Phoenix and maybe Denver, uh, also New York. I thought that was a pretty good win for Los Angeles. I think their biggest issue has just been health. I think that when your team is good as the Lakers are, you know, that's really the only thing that can stand in your way. I think that they played championship caliber defense. I think they have two superstar all-NBA guys in LeBron and AD when healthy. You know, they're a force to be reckoned with. I still see them as a team that can uh, make it out of the West. I think there are teams that could beat them, you know, that are talented enough to beat them. But, you know, if you're asking me who I think going to come out of the East and West, I have us, the Sixers, and I got the Lakers coming out of the West. And, um, you know, I could see that series going seven games. I would go with us in seven. I mean, you know, hey, you know, I'm pushing all my chips to the table, but it is what it is, man. We, I don't think that, you know, we, we made any secret that we're in pursuit of a championship be it this season or you know, next year. But um, I like what we're doing. I particularly think defense is our strong suit, much like the Lakers. Um, I think the game we played in Philly this year was, to me, it felt like a finals game which we narrowly won, which we almost gave away, but still found a way to pull out at the buzzer. But that whole game, it really felt like a finals game. It felt like these were the two teams that should be in the NBA finals. How long do you think the Sixers have a window for? Uh, I hate windows. I hate <laughs> I don't. I, I want to feel like we have a chance to win. I think that we really have to, to make it a concerted effort to win, I would say, like in the next three to four years. You know, we have to find a way to punch through the window and get to the finals, at least. I think so. I think that the next three to four years are our best opportunity. I wouldn't say our only opportunities. I would say our best opportunities would probably be in the next three to four years. Me personally, I still think we need another elite score on this team. I think if we get that, I think we could truly be a serious threat and a, a heavy favorite to win. If we can get one more score. Some guys I was hoping for at the trade deadline was guys like Zach Levine. You know, in my fondest dreams, I wanted Bradley Bill to come to the Sixers. I think he would be a great fit on this team. I really do. But those, I feel like we need that kind of player. And that would increase our chances of maybe winning multiple championships. And you know, that's the way that I see it. Um, that's no knock on Tobias Harris because I personally am a fan of Tobias Harris. Last season, save for his production in the postseason, I was fairly pleased with how he played last year. And I think that he's having a great season this year. Uh, I just, you know, just looking at the, at, you know, the landscape of this team, I just feel like that that would really increase our chances of competing if we could add one more score to this team. Is there any regret about not retaining Jimmy Butler, especially after seeing the Heat go to the finals? Well, I heard a report the year that we signed him. I want to say it was at the 2018-29. We're not signed. We traded for him. I want to say it was the 2018-2019 year from a reliable reporter, Rick Buca, I believe, that he had already made up his mind that he wanted to go elsewhere. I personally don't know why that is. If I had to speculate, I would say maybe um, he wasn't a big believer in Brett Brown. If I had to guess, but I really don't know why. But I, you know, from that point on, I was like, well, I don't know if he's even really committed to staying anyway. So I'm sure that an offer was made. I think Jimmy Butler had other plans in mind. You know, I've read reports that he had got tired of playing in cold cities, ready to get into, you know, a warmer climate, see some palm trees. And my goodness, who wouldn't want to live and work in Miami, right? So I think that Jimmy Butler had his own plans. And Jimmy is a different cat. And he's different. I mean, I don't think we you could ever really predict what he's going to do or, you know, what he has in mind. The only concern I really had about signing Jimmy Butler to a long-term deal was his age. He's been playing well so far in Miami, but I was concerned about signing him to a long-term deal and how he will hold up throughout the course of that deal because it was a big investment to be made at that point. There are times I do miss him, sure. You know, I think that he – I always admire Jimmy's grit. I think he does have leadership. It can rub you like sandpaper, but it's good leadership. But I would say there isn't any regret. 
I hope we don't have any regrets about it. I think that, you know, Jimmy Butler wasn't committed to staying here. And that's the bottom line. But I do think that I'm happy to see that he's doing good things in Miami, except for when they play the Sixers. But there are days when I wish he was in the lineup and there are other days where I said, hey, it just didn't work out. You know, that's what I said. I know that as a Sixers fan, seeing Butler go to the finals, that had to stink just a little bit. But, you know, things happen for a reason. As we wrap this up, what are ways people could reach out to you, talk a little bit about the Sixers or anything else? And do you have anybody you want to give any shout outs to or anything? Um, like I said, I'm I'm uh I'm on Facebook. My Twitter handle is Lynn Outlaw and also the same handle on Instagram, you know, if anyone wanted to reach out. 